South Korea, Republic of Korea, Bay Han Min Kuk, a country where Korean race started, where Kepa was born. With more than 89 million supplies, where these idols were born. Welcome to our Anthropolinguistic Podcast and this time we will talk about the hottest idols in 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome NCD 2020! <laughs> okay, now I'm thinking of naming this section as NC Talk then anyway. So, I'm Ari and I will be your host for today's podcast and of course I'm not alone here because some friends will accompany me throughout our discussion. Ladies and gentlemen, para first tarianto. Anggi Fitria and Rizaldi Rizkinanda. Hello. <laughs> okay, very nice. Thank you everyone for coming to our discussion today. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you might be wondering why NCD was so special from NCD that they become our subject of this anthropolinguistic podcast. But most importantly, you might be thinking of what anthropolinguistic is. So maybe can you help me, Farah, to explain what anthropolinguistic is? Of course, Ari. Dear viewers, you all know how us humans communicate through language, right? So the study of language as cultural resource and speaking as cultural practice is called linguistic anthropology. Well, most people use the term linguistic anthropology or LA and anthropology linguistic interchangeably since they're very similar they view language as both a resource for and a byproduct of social interaction it means that the language focus on how the language itself creates different culture it can be between groups between individuals identities communities you name it and I'd be lying to you if I told you I can understand these terms in one sitting because Hey, we had an entire semester in uni dedicated for that. So I guess it will be easier if we provide examples later on. How about that, Ari? Well said, Farah. Mm -hmm. So we will try to look closely at the language use and how it connects to the culture of the community observed. But again, we haven't answered the question, why NCT actually? So the viewers might get mad at me. So let's talk about the reasons why NCT was chosen. Maybe Angi can help me? Okay, Ari. Uh, NCT is uh, currently boom booming because there are 23 members currently and are divided into four groups. Namely, uh, NCT U, NCT Dream, NCT 1 to 7, and YP. Uh, NCT members are not only from South Korea but from various countries as well as in America, Germany, Thailand, Japan. Taiwanese and China, and uh, such as uh, Mark from Canada, Johnny from Chicago, then NCT member from uh, Thailand, namely is Pan, and then uh, from Japan, namely is Yuta, then uh, quite a lot of member from uh, China, namely Kun, Winwin, Lucas, Xiaojun, Renjun, Henry, and Chenli, then the other member are from South Korea. The NCT members are on average young from uh, 18 until 26 years old. Uh, this can make it um, interesting for fans because it is uh, different from other boy band groups. Then they have a community for their fans called NCTZEN from several countries. Uh, according to the M News community or NCT fan base, there are uh, four a million to hundred uh, following NCT on Twitter. Wow, That's right, so Angie. Much. So much. Okay, yeah. and especially for our country, SM Entertainment has established a branch in Indonesia, and I'm pretty sure most of the fans have known about this fact. So 
our research might be beneficial for Indonesian fans and SM Entertainment to develop their K-pop industry better and take care of their idols as well as their fans. However, it is impossible for us to observe everything about NCT, right? And NCT and their fans, NCTizen or Seasonist, because they have a lot of platforms and things to observe. Therefore, we decided to focus on NCT channel daily and the top three comments of the videos. Maybe Rizaldi can help me to explain more details about this. Yes, thank you very much, Ari. So we have chosen several videos from NCT's official YouTube channel, NCT Daily, as a source, and we take the video from the channel that was uploaded between the period of 21st September until 21st October 2020 because on that period they uploaded many new sections, they have new members and they release a new album. And from there we try to search for several top comments on this video that have over a thousand likes and then analyze them. And apart from the video as our prime source, we have also done some interviews regarding the set subject. And then, okay, uh, I will uh, add in uh, additional information about digital ethno. Uh, yes, and uh, since we observe online of persons, uh, we use digital uh, ethnography as our research design. This digital communication uh, refers to any communication that has media digital technology as an intermediary, and from that, we try to uh, see the mechanism and theory of social culture production in our daily activity. Thus, and digital ethnography is interested in the way people use uh, language, uh, interact with each other, use discourse, and build knowledge and collective identity of online community through and uh, are impressed by digital technology. Uh, digital uh, ethnography it is uh, easy to find in the era of globalization where uh, technology has developed such as social media, Instagram, Twitter, Telegram, WhatsApp, and many others. Besides, uh, we also apply shadowing that is uh, following uh, the movement of, of the community we are observing. Uh, we follow them through WhatsApp fanbase, through Twitter fanbase, and Instagram fanbase. Yes, like we said before, we did all that, and here we use language to communicate with others, be it in online and offline environment, right? So everything we say to the other person must convey some kind of meaning, and this is what we call a speech function. In our analysis later on, we focus on several types of speech functions proposed by Holmes, such as referential, in which the speech provides information, expressive, in which the speech shares a person's feeling, directive, which comments another person, static, or the speech function which express sympathy, commissive which express speaker's uh, intention, and also poetic which play upon words and sound, heuristic which acquire knowledge about one's environment, as well as metalinguistic which talk about the language itself. However, we will only go into details about some of them that represent the majority of comments we found. Mm -hmm. And we should remember that since this is an anthropolinguistic study, we should relate the micro-level data, the speech functions used by the fans in the YouTube comment sections, to the macro-level phenomena, the culture, the beliefs, the values, norms of the society. Therefore, we did interviews to seek some fans' thoughts, beliefs, and values, right? Yes, uh, we will also relate the linguistic phenomena with fan and idol culture. Mm -hmm, that's right, Angi. Fan and idol culture plays important roles in the society like how fans should behave, how idols should behave in front of camera or even outside of the frame, or maybe what builds them, their identity as fans or idols at the first place. Yeah, that, that is right actually. And more, moreover, through this NCT channel daily, we can look at their activities outside of their performance on stage. So we should be able to gain a lot of insight on fan idol relationship. For example, 
on the range of our observation, they have some videos of NCT learning foreign language such as Indonesian, English, and Chinese. They also have some interview section, member pairing section in awkward but it's okay. The cultural center of each member behind the scenes and many more that we will reveal in our discussion later. Mm -hmm, sounds interesting, Rizaldi. So let's try to get a big picture regarding the speech functions used by seasonists in the NCT channel daily comment sections. So what is the most dominant speech functions found there actually? Para? Based on what we observe, the most common speech function there is the referential function followed closely by the expressive function. And cities daily wide range of thematic segments attract many kinds of comments with various speech functions. For example, in the learning foreign language videos where the viewers are excited to point out the member's pronunciation, or in the behind the scenes of a photo shoot or a music video where the viewers are commenting about how cute the boys look and how silly they behave, etc. I see, so they mostly use either referential or express functions in the comment sections, right? Well, since referential functions deal with giving information or describing something, I think we can say that idols are subject to being described by the fans so far, right? When they decide to become an idol, they yeah, are willing to give almost, almost any information related to them. I mean, the fans even know when someone has wrong information about the idols, the idol's hobbies, preferences, habits, and many other things. And as the expressive one, I think anything related to the idols can spark some emotional feelings to the fans. And I guess that can mean that the fans have such emotional attachment to the idols then. Well, you can say so, but we haven't come into any conclusion yet before revealing the interviews and some references regarding fan and ideal culture. Yeah, I mean, we can think of those as hypotheses so far, and you're right, we haven't come into any conclusions yet. Like a saying in Korea, It's not over until it's over. But it's not wrong for a, re for a researcher to have a hypothesis or initial thoughts on their own research, right? Of course, yes. Yeah, <laughs> of course. So, should we talk about the speech functions found in each video then? Maybe starting from Rizaldi? Okay, uh, let me say something first, sorry. That was a good Korean. <laughs> I don't know what it's... <laughs> Thank you. What the meaning but yeah. That's a good I, one. I have put the meaning, actually. It's not over oh, yeah, until yeah, it's yeah, over yeah. yet. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. So how's okay, this so, function? So, yeah, I have identified several videos that were uploaded from 22nd September until 27th September 2020. And from the video, then I proceed to search for the top comment that has over a thousand likes. And from what I found, the majority of the top comment use expressive, expressive speech functions. For example, from the video titled 123 berputarlah gasing I found one top comment that write pertama kali nonton video langsung aku cepetin ke akhir buat lihat masih ada preview episode selanjutnya atau enggak syukur aja masih ada from that comment I think the commenter is a long fans that just saw the new video from the channel and he or she is expressing that he or she is glad that the channel is still doing the same thing as he or she remembered before from this comment, including the replies to this comment, I also find that while expressing their thought on the video, the fans also use emoticons to further express what they feel toward the video. For example, replying to the comment before, one user writes, Sama crying emoticon crying emoticon. This means that this user agreed to the previous comment. The user also added a crying face emoticon on the end of his sentence signaling that he or she is also really glad that the channel is still doing the same thing. That's actually almost the same thing as my findings, Rizaldi. I observed the videos from 28th September until 4th October. Two are entity scalpels, other two are language learning, and the other rest were uh, interviews. I found that around 50% were referentials followed by 40% expresses and the others were directives, phatic and commissive. For example, they commented 
Doyoung is not Doyoung when he doesn't complain or protest on something. This shows how well the fan knows about Doyoung actually. And on the last video of Learning Bahasa Indonesia, the top comment went on, Yah, kok tamat sih? To express her sadness because the video would be the last episode. And in another video, a fan commented that she was worried about Jamin's health because he drinks a lot of coffee a day. However, Jamin was not in the video actually. So it's really interesting to see how fans try to engage in other things facts or information about their idols even though they're not there. What about you, Farah? Yes, that's very interesting indeed. As for me, I focus on the sick videos from 5th to 11 October 2020 where NCT Daily had uploaded 8 videos in which they consist of 2 behind the scenes, 3 interviews, 2 games, and 1 foreign language lesson. For the comment section, around 50% of it of them were expressive and 40% were referential, the rest a mix of directive and tactic. For example, one of the co one of the top comment said 3.18 WTF did he just punch the watermelon and it breaks? Mark strongly, which gathered around 1000 likes and 30 is replies in a month. It indicates how the fans interact with each other, referring to sequence of the video as well as expressing their thoughts and emotion. We can see how the first commenter is using timestamp, one of YouTube features, to pinpoint exactly where the writer is most impressed. And also he or she is using caps lock and adding adjective as a middle name to emphasize the sentiment. The reply to this comment shows that the interaction between fans mostly is stating agreements and admiration toward Mark Lee's uh, physical strength. And how about you, Angi? Okay, uh, thank you, Farah. Uh, yes, uh, I have uh, identified uh, the comment video from 12 October until uh, 18 October by looking at the top comment that averaged around uh, 1,000 likes and uh, uh, 5 until 30 comments, uh, the results are uh, upset interesting because the data show an expressive function and a refer referential function. For the example on uh, expressive function, mm -hmm. when fans when fan say, uh, Tail is talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, so stopping, spectacular, not the same, totally unique. And then uh, this comment describes uh, NCT of fans who like one of the member NCT, the name is a tile. This fan thinks that everything tile does is always good, uh, spectacular, unique, and nothing can be. Uh, from this, uh, it can be seen that uh, he is the biggest, biggest fan of tile, uh, so that he does not mention ugly or not handsome at all about price that is spoken. Then I also define a referential function in the comment with like a 1300 uh, the fan site of when Jehyung man he has lived in America for years man that's why he was a dead man uh, this comment uh, that show that one of the fans uh, giving uh, information about uh, Jehyung uh, that uh, Jaehyun lived uh, in America for four years. Those are some example I found in a city in a city daily video content. Okay, so we found some types of speech functions here, such as preferential, expressive, directive, phatic, and commissive functions. But we did not find any poetic, heuristic, and metalinguistic functions here. Maybe because those functions tend to be in other discourse such as classes or novels or something else. On the other hand, the most frequently used speech functions are referentials and expressives. But why though? Dear viewers, have you ever thought about the reasons? If you have some reasons in your mind, you can try writing them in the comment section below and let's see whether we have the same findings. While waiting for your comments, let's have some light chit chat with our guest today. So, Farah? Okay, since we're talking about fandoms and idols basically, I've been wondering whether you have an idol. Yes, I have. My idol is Taylor Swift. Mm-hmm. 
So why do you idolize her? Her songwriting skills mostly, and also the Swifty fandom is huge, but very very supportive. I've been a fan since I was in sixth grade, so almost a decade now, and it's still as fun as ever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about Angie then? Yes, uh, I have uh, because I have uh, recently uh, following the NCT. I like uh, Jamin because he looks cool, cute, handsome, and funny. <laughs> Okay, so visual number one, right? What about Rizadi? Yeah. You're the only male guest here. Are you the same as the others? Do you like maybe boy group or Taylor Swift or something? No, 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 actually. Uh, I can say that I have an idol per se, but mm -hmm. I'm a huge fan of Broadway. Uh, mm -hmm. and some sort of Disney-ish music, you know, where they sing while they tell a story. So while I can say that I idolize them, I can say that I like listening to Idina Menzel, for example, mm -hmm. and I know uh, Hugh Jackman. Do you know Hugh Jackman, Ri? Mm -hmm, of course. You know him, right? He plays Wolverine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Who would have thought that the, the, the person who plays Wolverine could have such a beautiful voice, right? Really? <laughs> oh, what about you? What about you? What about you? <laughs> That's amazing. I personally like Super Junior and then EXO, 80s, G Idol, 17, NCT, and many more. But recently, I like Jay-Z though. I like any music that fits my ear and keeps me awake because I need to, I need to do a lot of things. I have a lot of homeworks. You, you have homeworks too, right? <laughs> so I need to be awake. Yeah. So music accompanies me. Okay, let's get back to our grand discussion today. Why did those fans mostly use referential and express speech functions in the NCT channel daily comment sections? Have you figured it out? If you haven't, you can listen to our discussion up to the end. If you have, you can also try finding out whether we have the same results throughout our podcast. Well, I think we can start analyzing the reasons with a brief explanation about fan and idol culture. I'm pretty sure, since we're a fan here, we should have direct experience of being a fan. But let's talk about it in theoretical ways. What would you say, Farah? Thank you, Ari. It's been such a journey in learning about fan culture, since the study itself is very dynamic. In the book entitled Fan Culture, Theory Slash Practice, published by Cambridge Scholars in 2012, there are a few takes on this issue particularly in the rapidly evolving relationship between fans and producers in the time of social media. Catherine Cook accused that entertainment and politics have become so increasingly, increasingly intertwined sorry, and calls for textual liberation. The expansion of canon are separate from the author's intent. Furthermore, in terms of viewing fan cultures through academic lens, Matt Hill states that there are structurally different ways of combining academic and fan identities. He defines scholar fans as professional <coughs> academics writing primarily for fellow scholars via the academic publishing institution. Thus, we can say that fan practices, fan spaces, fan producer relationships are rapidly evolving and the field of fan studies is trying to keep pace. This can also be seen in Korean pop or K-pop culture. Angie, if you like to continue, please. Okay, Farah, I will continue about the idol culture, especially in uh, South Korea. Uh, the Hollywood wave uh, has been uh, an international phenomenon that only took off in the early 20s. 2000, it arrived to the life of Korean pop culture uh, in global and domestic relevance. Uh, Korean pop idol and their fans play a huge role in a bringing pop culture to a broader range of ideas. Uh, their relationship uh, with each other is particularly interesting because of how much interaction actually goes on between them. Uh, it is uh, different from most Western artists, uh, in that they don't have uh, as many fan meetings, live streams, or responding to fan comments on uh, CNS or social networking sites as Korean pop idol. And this creates a uh, bond between the idols and fans because the interactions are more fungible. 
percent, then the fund best has expanded uh, and is a slowly dominating the global uh, front, especially that music company open audition for aspiring international performance to possibly to possibly earn a contract to work and train under that company. Uh, despite the unique uh, situation that has caused overwhelming support for the music genre and the performance, this can cause problems for fans and idols as well in the survey. Uh, a lot of the a lot of the direction that idol uh, to trust tend to be decided by the fans or fandom. The action they take and the work that they put in the helping their favorite idol groups win awards and high honor, uh, depending on the type of event. Uh, fan uh, use uh, each one with different purpose. For the example, uh, people uh, tend to post fan fiction as reaction on some blog where people tell that K-pop matching in group on the Facebook. Uh, online and then etc. Uh, most uh, CNS uh, can have multiple use for friends, but there are always a uh, dominant purpose that each tend to have. It is a busy and quick comedy uh, as new music comes out every week of the year. So there are previously a system behind how company can ever to debut, debut so many groups. Release so much much music and release music of video high production value. On the fan side of him, the community is equally as active in order to keep up with all the comebacks and getting the latest news on their idol group of different. Alright, I find it very interesting actually. There is a lot of new information for me because for me to be honest, I don't really know that much about South Korean idol culture specifically, but one similarity of fans that I can think of is how willing they are to spend money uh, on their idol. Like Angie has explained before, like the K pop fans, they sell merch, right? Uh, yeah. From the K pop group. True, very uh, true. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, a true. diehard fan could spend hundreds thousands or even millions of rupiah to buy something that could show that they are a part of one fans group i think fan culture cannot be separated from this kind of consumerism behavior for example i have a friend he really likes anime related things for and for those of you who have been living under a rock for the past 50 years maybe anime is a japanese animation so this friend of mine he is willing to spend millions and millions of rupiah just to buy some action figures. Uh, it's a small miniature of a character from anime that he likes. I'm sure this kind of thing also happened in a similar type of fan culture. Not only specific to K-pop, but also K-pop is included, right? Mm -hmm, yeah, some K-pop fans also do that. They spend a lot of money to buy albums, to buy merchandise, to come to fan signs to buy ticket concerts and many things. I used to be that kind of fans actually. <laughs> and oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. With this okay. yeah. I used to, but now I've stopped, okay? <laughs> I realize money is more important. <laughs> yes. And yeah, with these evidences, we can see that fan and idol practices have spread around the world and keep developing. And anyway, we also did some interviews with and citizens, right? And I don't think NC talk would be complete without involving NC citizens as NC this fandom. So let's see what we have found from our interviews. And for the interviewed fans, you don't have to be worried because your identity will be anonymous. We will cover that, <laughs> okay? Basically, we asked them about their points of views and feelings about NCT as well as NCT Channel Daily, like what makes them watch NCT what makes them idolize anxiety, what makes them happy or angry. And we have gathered eight anxiety fans to be interviewed. Mm -hmm. I personally have interviewed two female fans in their 20s from France and Morocco, whom I found on Twitter. And I don't know how to thank them actually. They are so nice and helpful. So lots of love for French and Moroccan anxiety. Sarang yo! Sarang yo! Sarang yo! Thank you! <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so they both were attached by NCT for the first time because NCT have uh, NCT has a different concept from other idol groups. That is, they have various types of music and members from different countries and of course different cultural backgrounds. And as for NCT Channel Daily, they like to see their idols activities besides stages performances, besides besides their performance performances on the stage. They said that seeing the daily life, their daily, daily activities make them feel closer. Seeing their idols happy make them happy as well. Seeing their idols snort make them very angry. So basically, both have this emotional attachment to their idols. And since in NCT Channel Daily, the idols talk about their daily life, both feel closer too because they can know more about their idols. One of them even noticed that one idol gets lower airtime, so they demand equal airtime for every idol, every member. So this is the information I got from the interviews actually. Amazing. They feel closer, they feel closer and want to be closer to their idols as if their idols were their responsibility or something. So what about you, Vara? That is such an amazing story, Ari. As for me, I also managed to interview two females in their 20s, but they're from Jakarta. They said that they idolized NCT since their first debut time and even had notification on for every NCT channel's daily update. Aside from the idol's look and talent, obviously, they appreciate the content in which everyone can see the other side of idol's life, such as the behind-the-scenes video, because they can be silly and that's very relatable. From the interview, I can also infer that the fans will talk about the content of the video in other media such as Twitter, Telegram, Facebook. Especially those who have a fan account where they can vote for their ideas, they can defend them if anything goes wrong. They can do everything under their fan account. This shows how much they really care about the boys' life and to communicate that, they use various speech functions to do so. How about you, Anggi? Okay, Farah. Uh, my interview results are not much different from Ali and Obara. Uh, I have uh, uh, responded three people from Indonesia or uh, and citizen friends. Uh, the results of the interview show uh, quite different results, uh, namely one of the speaker who has a uh, following uh, NCT uh, since the beginning of their debut. There were also two sources uh, or two Respondent uh, will vote uh, NCT daily during the uh, pandemic COVID-19 uh, because they felt uh, confused about uh, feeling their real time, so they decided to watch uh, NCT daily. And then uh, uh, from that, they enjoy uh, watching NCT because they are different from other boy band groups, and then uh, they have uh, quite a quite of of a uh, member and come from a uh, various country. Uh, the speaker uh, also expressed that they were happy and interested in uh, seeing uh, the video content of uh, NCT Daily because they show their daily activity. Uh, one uh, respondent uh, said that this is uh, something different from uh, other boy band groups and has a plus point for the NCT. And then uh, the speaker also often pay attention uh, to the likes and comments that are interesting and funny from and citizen fans, so that they make uh, them happy and lucky. And then uh, the speaker also revealed that being uh, a citizen fan will not be a complete, complete uh, without a buying a uh, merchandise, uh, stuff about NCD such as uh, album, photo cards, like pics. Uh, and then etc. Uh, according uh, to them, this are uh, their own visitor as if they uh, already feel like they are two friends of SCP. Oh, wow. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you, you guys have done your homework, huh? Of course. That is, that is <laughs> what do you mean? Amazing <laughs> finding. That is such an amazing finding. Uh, I think I could relate to the interviews and answer in this case. 
I mean, an idol is only a human after all, right? Mm-hmm. So by showing how human they are, not just showing how perfect or unreachable they are, fans could relate more to their idols. Some fans might even find something new from their idols, right? Outside from what they usually show in actual stage. And this feeling that they could relate to their idols make them feel closer to their idols. And as a byproduct, like in Ari's finding, fans will feel, fans will have emoti- emo- emotional connection to their idols. Fans will feel what their idol feel. They will protect their idols when they are attacked. They will feel sad when something bad happens to their idols. And they will feel happy when something good happens to their idols. Mm-hmm, that's right. And that's really interesting, actually. And now the puzzle is getting clearer because we have collected pieces of information based on fan and idol culture as well as fans' thoughts on their idols. Let's try putting those pieces into a more visible puzzle then. As we have discussed throughout our podcast, three top comments of N-Citizens in NCT Channel Daily mainly cover up referential and expressive speech functions. The triggers can be many things. For the referentials, the fans describe and give information about their idols, like what they are doing in the video, relate them to details or other videos, other information of their life. They pay attention to small details, even if the details are not actually the main content of the videos. Those small details can also result in in, in expressive functions, like the way the idols talk, they find it cute, the way they smile, the way they interact with each other. They feel happy when their idols are happy. As the fans said, the contents also have as the fans say, the contents make them feel closer. One of the fans even said that they want to make sure the idols are also happy and having fun with the contents. And if we relate those functions and interviews with the theory of fan culture, they match one another. Lucy Bennett in 2016 argued that being a fan means showing an effective tie to an entity and that can be seen clearly through the speech functions here. The speech functions shows the fans' affection towards their idols, even if the idols, even if the directives we found, please, for example, please save Song Chan from Hei Chan Hyung, please include Renjun in the photo shoot, and can we talk about the possibilities that this can be a great vocal subunit? So, this is all for the sake of their idol and however their attitudes are also open to positive thoughts actually as larson and Subernis in 2012 stated that fandom has led to an increasing degree of tolerance and acceptance this can be shown from how the fans are really looking at their idols actually how they tolerate their mistakes and think of them as cute instead how they respect their idols hard work but are they really tolerant enough actually? We cannot answer that until we do further research. And wow, seems like my <laughs> words <laughs> sounds like a closing remark or something. So what do you think about our findings today, Farah? That's a very nice rating, mm-hmm. Ali. Uh, especially you. like how you highlight the fans as the backbone of any fans of any fandoms because Let's be real, they really are. Oftentimes, the fans say that, oh, they are lucky to have NCT, they are lucky to have NCT daily channel as their endorphin or happiness supply, but I think idols would also be very happy, very look, very lucky to have these fans to stand by them anytime, anywhere. Any addition maybe from Angi or Rizaldi? I agree with Farah actually, so I have no addition to that. <laughs> okay then. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, uh-huh. so ladies and gentlemen, yeah, since like time has flight so fast, as fast as NCT's popularity, <laughs> I think we need to add our NC talk today. But if you still have further questions or just curious about something related to our discussion today, do not hesitate to write them on the comment section below. And if you like the video, don't forget to click the like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you for our special guest today, Farah, Angi, and Rizaldi. Thank you very much. 
I really appreciate your Thank coming. You. Thank you. Thank you. I hope our findings bring some new insights to fans or people who are doing research on fan culture. I am Ari, and this is NC Talk from Anthropolinguistic Podcast. See ya.